The international coaching scene has changed rapidly over the last 18 months. Wayne Pivak, one of the casualties of the tumultuous waters. For Wales, the replacement was easy, a return to a great of the game, Warren Gatland. So what has Gatland changed from the Pivak era? And what tools will Wales take to the World Cup in France? So how has Wales' attack changed under Gatland? Firstly, Wales have embraced a high-skill approach, with forwards passing more per carry now than 95% of professional teams. Take a look at this play against England. Wales received the kick in their own 22. Liam Williams does well to beat Elliot Daly before finding Chris Junza with an offload. The lock then passes inside for Basham, who carries well. Coming off the edge, Dan Lydiot gives a great tip pass to Dillon Lewis, who continues the attack and gets Wales on the front foot. Wales are then able to spread the ball wide against admittedly a 13-man England and Sam Parry makes a damaging run down the left-hand side. This ball movement wasn't just limited to when they had a numerical advantage. Look here, when Jones almost tips George North into a gaping hole, or here as they get a gain line carry after finding a weak English shoulder. Wales have also added more offloading among the forwards, especially in the wide channel since Gatland's first time in charge. Faletau made two near-identical offloads against France in the Six Nations, looking to continue the wide attack, while Aaron Wainwright makes a great play here to free Jack Morgan, who then himself offloads for Gareth Davis to score against England. While this expansive play can be linked to the skills developed under Pivac, Gatland has reverted to type with the role of his centres. We can see in the oval attack data that the share of passing made by the Welsh 12 has fallen dramatically. Pivac's 12s were higher passes than 89% of centres across pro rugby. Under Gatland, this has fallen to just 64%. Instead, shades of Warren Ball have returned, with centres asked to do the hard yards. Look at the actions of Hadley Parks in the 2019 Grand Slam, repeatedly carrying hard and direct into the defensive line. Gatland's system has been slightly tweaked, but the general theme remains. Wales now attack much tighter and are driven by the 9 and 10, while the centre partnership is much more carry focused. Wales were famous for their kicking approach under Gatland in 2019, so it is no surprise that it has returned. Wales now sit in the 89th percentile for total kicks, the top 10% for kicks retained and the top 5% for kicks which land in field. Kicks landing in field were a defining characteristic driven by Gatlin's desire for a hyper-fit Wales. However, the tactic doesn't just focus on fitness levels, it also removes the line out. At the Six Nations in 2023, 40 tries came from line outs while in 2022, 32 tries came from lineouts. No other launch platform contributed more than 14 tries in either year. Kicking in field removes this typically damaging weapon. One style of kick Wales use a lot is the crossfield bomb. Look at these two examples against England in 2019, where they kick from the midfield to isolate the open side winger. The same theme is present here against France and Scotland in the Six Nations this year. Aerial pressure is a key part of the Welsh DNA. They also use crossfield kicks as a more traditional attacking weapon. Two Wales tries in the World Cup warm-up series came from their use of cross kicks, part of a large attacking arsenal that they will use to surprise teams at World Cup 2023. The final aspect of the Welsh side is their ability without the ball. Again, we can consult the data for some insights into how they defend. Under Gatland, they have prioritised making their tackles, sitting in the top 5% for tackle success rate, while they also look to apply pressure, making more than average hits behind the gain line. This line speed, however, isn't an aggressive outside blitz like South Africa. Instead, Wales bring a much squarer, wider, zonal defence. Take a look at these clips from the game against France earlier this year. On the very first defensive set, we can see the width that Wales have in their defence. The wingers are particularly important here, helping the defence to fill the field. France burn through all their attacking options and kick the ball to Wales, who then start an attack in the France half.
In the second example, we see the flat nature of Wales's defence, with no clear dog legs emerging, instead all defending as if on a piece of string. As France move towards each touchline, this piece of string simply slides across, presenting a red wall to the French attack. During this attack, we also see a preference for low chop tackles, meaning that Wales make effective tackles without needing to be dominant. It also allows a second player to attack the ball in the tackle or on the floor, helping to slow down the French attack. In this final defensive clip from the game against Italy, we can see the system at work again. Wales have filled the field with their wingers, trying to get as wide as possible. Notice how deep Italy are playing, so Wales will have to press them, but they need to remain connected. In the tackle, Wales fight to hold up the ball carrier and slow the ball down. On the next phase, Italy again start really deep, and while Wales are aggressive with their line speed, they don't lose their connections. Italy make an error, and Wales have gained 15 or more metres from a single defensive set. Wales had a rocky start under Gatland for a variety of reasons, but with Gatland having more contact time to ingrain his style over pre-season, and with a simplified approach, they can begin to build their strengths. The pragmatism in the kicking game and defensive connection promise a hardened edge alongside their exciting attack. It's a useful toolkit to take to France, and we don't have long to wait until we find out whether Gatland can take Wales beyond the group stages yet again.